Hi, fifth graders. Today is the last section of our video series on the Seder. So we're going to start at Shulchan Aruch, the meal, the part that everyone's ready to when we get there. But Te'avon, have a good meal. So after all of the parts that have come before, we're ready to eat. We have our meal. There's not a lot to say about it. Everybody enjoys that part. After the meal, we get to the section called Safun. Safun is the section where people go searching for the Afikoman. Now at this point, one of two things has happened in your family, depending on your family's tradition. Either an adult has hidden the Afikoman and the children are expected to go and find it, which is a very common uh, tradition. Or another common tradition is that at some point when the adults weren't looking, a child kidnapped the Afikoman and has put it away for safekeeping, planning to negotiate in order to return it to the table. So since our Seder must end, the meal must end with the Afikoman, the adults can be rather motivated to meet the demands of the children. So I've seen it done both ways. I've seen uh, all kinds of different situations where children get rather modest token gifts. I've seen some rather spectacular gifts given to children at this time in order to get that Afikoman back. So let's first look at the name for this section, Safun. If you look at the Shorish, Sarife Nun, it comes from a word that means hide. As a matter of fact, it's the exact word that we're told um, about Moshe um, when he was hidden as a baby. It's using this same Shorish. And um, People often ask me, why do we even have this part of the Seder? And quite frankly, the only explanation I've heard, well, I've heard of two. The first is it keeps the kids awake and interested in the meal and in the Seder. And the second is, again, related to that Greek meal, the symposium, that the Seder is um, constructed like. So... In a symposium, the dessert, the last course, was called an afikoman. So that is exactly where we get afikoman. And it is the end of our meal. And I believe that in the time of the, drink symposi the Greek symposia, there was entertainment at that point in the meal. For us, it's just finishing it off. That's our dessert. And we move forward. So I, we already spoke about the different traditions, about how it's hidden. Uh, once it's eaten... It is tradition to eat nothing else that night. That has ended our evening meal for us. So after eat, ending our meal, it's time to move on to Barech. You can see the Shoresh is the same as Bir, Birkat, Hamazon, from the word Bracha, blessing. So that is exactly what happens in the section called Barech. We say Birkat Hamazon. Now there are some additions and changes for Pesach that are similar to other holidays. So the first is that we begin by singing Shir Hamalot before we get to the Zimun, the Rabotai Nevarath part. So Shir Hamalot is um, sung first, and it's sung first all week long, not just on a Yom Tov, but during Cholo Moed also. If you say Birkat Amazon, it would start with Shir Hamalot. We also add a whole paragraph, and this is also throughout the week of Pesach, that starts with the words Ya'ale v'yavo, and both the Shir HaMalot and the Ya'ale v'yavo happen many times during the year because they're added for um, other holidays as well. And then we have a special Harachaman that is only added on Yom Tov, so the first two days and the last two days. We add Harachaman, uh, asking God, the merciful one, to grant us a day that is entirely good. 
And instead of saying migdol at the beginning, we say, I mean, I said that backwards, uh, we say migdol at the beginning of the last paragraph instead of magdil. And that is also for the entire week, Cholomoed and Yom Tov. And after Berkat HaMazon, it's time for Hallel. Now, you will remember we actually did the beginning of Hallel during the section called Magi, after talking about all the miracles and how God has so, in so many ways, protected us. Uh, we've we said the beginning part of Hallel, and we're going to finish it during this part. But the first question that I really always like to teach the answer to is, what is Hallel? So I want to remind you back to the beginning of the year where we talked about the Jewish Bible and the many terms that we use. And one of the terms we use is Tanakh, which refers, refers to our entire Bible. And we saw that it's made up of the Taf for Torah, Nun for Nevi'im, and the Chaf for Ketuvim. So if we were to look closer in Torah, you know what we would find there, the five books that are part of the Torah. You know that in Nevi'im, we've talked about how that's where the prophets' books are. Ketuvim has a variety of other kinds of writing in it. And one of the things in there is Sefer Tehillim, the book of Psalms. And inside Sefer Tehillim, there are 150 different psalms, or they're kind of like poems praising God. And each one is has a title just based on its order. Psalm number one, Psalm number two, Psalm number three. So now that we know where the psalms come from, Hallel is a group of six psalms that's sung from Sefer to Helim. And together they make up Hallel, and they're sung on other happy days, on holidays in Rosh Chodesh, to praise God. And as I said already, we already sang part of it tonight. During Hallel is when the remainder of it is sung. And we get to the very last part of the Seder called Nirtsa. Now this is where we have some fun songs. Um, we say, L'shana haba'ab Yerushalayim, next year in Jerusalem. It's an interesting thing to think that at the end of every Seder, we say this saying, next year, could we, we hope to be in Jerusalem? And I don't know if that's literally true for everybody. Certainly there have been times in history where Jews have, um, where most Jews yearned to go back to Jerusalem, to the land of Israel. Um, I don't know if that's true today. There are plenty of Jews who would like to live in Yerushalayim and spend next year's Pesach in Yerushalayim. But I think that it's alluding to a bigger idea than that even. And that is the idea that someday, someday the, Mashiach, the Mashiach, the Messiah, will come um, and will let us know that um, an age of peace is coming and an age without the struggles that we live with in everyday times. Um, and at that point, we're told that the Jews will all return to Israel. So when we say, L'shana habab Yerushalayim, it's also a wish, a prayer, for getting to that time in history where, um, where things are good, more than good, they're perfect. And uh, that is the hope that we bring to that. Now, before we move from this page, I want to point out to you that Nir Tzah is made from the Shoresh Reish Tzadi He, Rotsa Rotsa. And part of what we're doing in this section is we read a poem where we ask God, we say to God, basically, we hope that we've conducted the Seder in the way that you wanted. Hence the word Nir Tzah. Now, one thing I didn't do as we moved through the Seder was point out exactly where each cup of wine was. And what I want to do is here at the end, I want to go back and teach you something that we learned um, back in Parshat Vayera. Um, this is at the time when Moshe first comes to speak to B'nai Israel when they're slaves in Egypt. And he says to them, um, he delivers God's message that I'm going to take you out from here. 
and we looked at the words that I've highlighted in blue here, and we've seen that there I said to you, God makes four promises with four verbs. Vahotseti, I will take you out. Vahitsalti, I will save you. Vagaalti, I will redeem you. Vlakachti, I will take you to be my people. Veheveti, at which time many of you shouted out to me, wait a minute, that's five. And I said to you, it's interesting. The rabbis had a disagreement. They saw these verbs as being God's promises to take B'nai Israel out of Egypt as the reason why we have four cups of wine. But look, there are perhaps five verbs. So I had told you at the time that the rabbis disagreed how many of them to count. The first four everyone agreed with. These are all part of God's promises to take us out of Egypt. So the rabbis that saw that and thought that was the end of it said we should have four cups of wine. The other rabbi said, but look, the Heveti, I will bring you to the land. That is part of his promises. We should have five cups of wine. And the disagreement between them went back and forth. The rabbis that said four cups of wine said, no, you can't include the last one. Going into the land of Israel is not part of leaving Egypt. That's a different thing. It should only be four. The other rabbi said going into the land of Israel was the entire reason for leaving Egypt. Therefore, we should count all five. Well, the rabbis were big compromisers. There's lots of evidence of the rabbis compromising on things. And this is a place where they compromised. Since everyone agreed on the first four verses, they said, we will have four cups of wine. And there you see them here. And in them is those four promises. They said, but we can't answer. We don't know whether or not the fifth cup should be included. So their compromise was they put the fifth cup on the table. And they said, when Elijah comes, Elijah will answer the question for us. When Elijah comes, that's a reference to the Messiah coming. When Elijah comes and we're going to move into that perfect time where there's not all the wars and sickness and everything, he will know the answer to the question. So we're going to put one cup in the middle of the table and we're going to call it Kos Eliyahu, the cup of Elijah. And we aren't going to drink it. We open the door hoping that Elijah will be there to tell us that the Messiah is now coming. And that is where the Kos Eliyahu comes from. It's there because we're waiting to find out whether or not we should have the fifth cup if the fifth verse counts. And the time we're going to find it out is when Elijah comes. So that's the purpose of Kos Eliyahu. Well, you guys have made a great deal of of progress moving through the entire Seder this week. Kola Kavod, I'm very impressed and I've been very pleased with the information you've sent me, telling me what you've learned, what new information you've learned each day. I hope that you bring some of this information to your family Seders and, and share it during the family Seder because I think you'll have a lot to offer. Wishing you a Chag Kasher V'Sameach.